How, how big a deal is this, and how does this change the equation for Robinhood, given the focus, at least historically, on younger consumers? Now we're talking about retirement. Well, Andrew, um, the world is changing around us. You know, we've talked a lot about inflation and rising interest rates, but one of the other things that's been changing is the nature of work. You see an increasing number of people sort of avoiding the one employer traditional model and doing freelance work, doing gig economy work, having multiple sources of income. And uh, with this product, we're excited to offer a retirement account that's specifically geared towards the needs of these customers. So as you mentioned earlier, it's the first and only uh, IRA that offers a match. And with the nature of work changing, the traditional kind of employer as a safety net model is evaporating a little bit too. And we're happy for Robinhood to kind of step in and help our customers retire. And even though, you know, How there might be less interest in investing than there was in 2020 and 2021, uh, interest among retirement, particularly among Gen Z and younger people, is really high. And right. you have uh, each successive generation of consumers uh, interested in, in retirement at an earlier stage. Right. So um, how, how much yeah, that, do you see this, that Vlad, though, as how much do you see this as something for your current consumer set? And how much of this is about attracting a new consumer base? I think it's a little bit of both. Certainly, when we talk to our current consumers, we have a lot of them that are interested in retirement. It is one of the most uh, frequent asks that we get from our brokerage customers. Uh, some of them have retirement accounts elsewhere. Others don't, but are interested in retirement and don't know exactly how, right. how to start. And it can be complicated, you know. Um, there's lots of different account types. You have to decide between a Roth and a traditional uh, you have to understand kind of the contributions and and the uh, the tax implications of these decisions. And we've always prided on ourselves on not just offering great economics with the match, but making it really simple for people so that they can understand and, right. and move past the jargon and get to their goal, which is to build up right. a, a nest egg. Um we got to talk about the Sam Bankman Freed of all of it. Uh, he, of course, had uh, taken a stake in your company. There was a lot of speculation, as you very well know, that he wanted to maybe even buy the entire business. What did you think when you heard about the bankruptcy and all of the other um, now speculation or worse around what's happened here? Yeah, um, well, it's it's an I think an unfortunate outcome for customers who have their money locked up um, in FTX and FTX US. I think my takeaway, and it's something that we haven't really heard discussed too much, is there's a there's a little bit of um, you know a pattern that I'm starting to see with these foreign companies that create US subsidiaries, and these US subsidiaries are relatively small, but it gives them access to the U.S. market. And, um, you know, Robinhood operates a little bit differently than that. We're a U.S. parent company. Uh, we obviously have regulated businesses here, but I think companies have been using kind of these these foreign home bases, whether they be in the Caribbean, in the case of FTX, or, you know, you've got companies in China, and they haven't been... Um, sort of scrutinized to the, to the same degree. And I think that's something that regulators should take a look at and make sure that, you know, the scrutiny is the same, if not higher, if if you're offshore and uh, operating a business right. that has subsidiaries that serve American customers.